Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the, another post World Cup video. Um, this is just one that has been bugging me for a while and I thought let's wait until the end of the World Cup to um, settle the debate. No, I'm not gonna settle that debate, but I wanna give my two cents about it. Uh, as for World Cup reviews, you can expect two more videos from me that are in the works. One is basically a general review and then basically one where we relieve the entire World Cup uh, kind of in the montage thing with nice music put under. You saw the title of the video, Has Messi Settled the GOAT Debate? And let me up front and maybe you can finish the video right here and I will look at this time to time step. No, he hasn't. That's my answer. But I want to give the reason why. Because it's a tiresome debate. He may, I think there's a good argument uh, to say that he might be the best player of his generation. And even that is a really, really tough arg argument to make because there is another player called Cristiano Ronaldo uh, who was almost his equal. My line about them was always that if you would construct a perfect footballer, you would construct someone like Cristiano Ronaldo with all his athletic ability, the work ethic, uh, everything about him was just uh, next level. However, there's this little midget who is everything but the, uh, but the perfect uh, athlete and, and so on that just is better than him. This was for a long time my stance on it. Uh, and you know, this is a stance that is probably now more than 10 year, 10 or more than 10 years old. Uh, there was a period in the late 2010s where I think Cristiano was definitely more successful than Messi down to bad management of the Barcelona team, bad management of the Argentina team. And also Cristiano uh, actually being in a really truly excellent form that he maybe has a little bit outdone this because of his egomania is a completely different side of this debate. But I think whatever you want to say, it is maybe a valid argument to say that uh, Messi is slightly better than Cristiano Ronaldo in that debate. However, I would, al I would, I would always say that Cristiano is the better goal scorer. And Cristiano really saw a need to reform himself into a pure goal scorer because he was not that. He was a winger, a flashy winger that was actually uh, rather annoying. And like Slatan, who also became a better goal, goal scorer as uh, he aged, Cristiano did the same thing. And of course, it makes it easier because people like to rack up numbers. And you know, if you score many goals, you're automatically uh, bringing up the numbers. It is that easy. Also helped that the debate is large, large fueled by an El Clasico debate. If you're on the Real Madrid side, you're more likely going for Cristiano Ronaldo. If you're on the Barcelona side, you're definitely more going for Messi. I mean, uh, I, we all understand this. Now, both have won the Continental Championships. However, I have to say that winning the Euros in 2016 is a bigger feat. Just by the format of the tournament, there are 24 teams in there. The density up top in Europe is much, much tighter. Um, then in the Copa America, where, yeah, you basically, it all comes down, uh, you don't, shouldn't stumble against Brazil and, you know, you lost twice on penalties to Chile in a final. Would have Messi won two or three Copas and not the World Cup, uh, then I would say it's definitely equal. Now, winning the World Cup is also, and it's very interesting, and please bear with me, I stay with the Cristiano-Messi debate for now. I want to put it then in the larger context of, really, the all-time part. Um, but from a national, uh, for, from the World Cup careers, all of them did not really have great World Cups. It is, and you know, for me, it was mostly when I think about it. Now, the first they played more or less the same World Cups, 2006. Yes, Portugal made it to the semi-final, but with Cristiano as a bit part player, Messi just came off the bench, scored, scored a goal there. Uh, Definitely the age played a difference. Cristiano was the old, 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 old player and he was the up and coming star, but this was still a team largely run by the likes of Figo and so on. 2010 was a disappointment for both of these sides. I remember this Portugal team was not really uh, that exciting and the Argentina team, while being a spectacle, were handily dismantled with Messi not even scoring a goal. 2014, complete disaster for uh, Portugal and Cristiano Ronaldo. 
Messi made it to the final. However, uh, except I think one or two uh, assists in the run-up to the final, he was more or less anonymous there. So also not a good work of him. 2018, uh, real disaster for Argentina. Although there was one shining Messi moment where he scores the goal against Nigeria, uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo shining at the end, at the beginning, but then quickly falling flat. And in 2022, this year, it almost seemed uh, almost a, an almost similar story, except that Messi actually got better as the tournament moved on. And for the first time, you can argue that there was a player that carried Argentina. But not to the extent that Maradona did, and this will be, become a point. Because this was a team where Messi was the cherry on top of it. But he, having finally scored a knockout stage, and then scoring every single knockout stage, and more importantly, showing up in the final, in a brilliant clash with Mbappé, that is something special. However, uh, winning a World Cup not only depends on you, and this is where Messi always had, had an advantage. I always felt that it's easier for Argentina to win a World Cup than for Portugal. Because Portugal never has won it. Argentina has already won it twice. There's a little bit more pedigree. There's usually more talent pool. Having said that, uh, in Portugal, probably the talent pool on uh, coaches is next to none. So it was a little bit a shame there. And I think poor Portugal has had really great generations as of late as well. But in general, I think it is easier for Messi to win a World Cup than it is for Portugal. It's simply said, just by paddy pedigree. So the debate, just basing it on winning a World Cup, ending the debate, really didn't seem all that fair to begin with. However, now he has that World Cup and he has the Copa America and it's also remarkable that as his club career is maybe coming a little bit to a standstill and Messi likely will not win another Champions League uh, and Cristiano has, has him beat there, uh, his national team career has taken off. That is something, uh, speaking also how, how maybe the focus was more first on Barcelona and the great cast that he was there. This was the legacy builder, but the legacy, and you know, uh, the, uh, to pull it down and to laminate it, that was not a late national team career because everyone was talking about that. So, for me, when it comes between those two, I think it's very much down to personal preference. And, you know, just enjoy that we had both of these great players. I personally like a personality like Messi a little bit more than I like uh, this boisterous personality of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. But having said that, I always like Diego Maradona with all his flaws. This is the one thing that maybe I... And because there are flaws... Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, he tries to wipe away all these flaws and it's kind of this Superman per, per persona. This is what uh, does not reflect well with me and uh, all these uh, accusations that have been uh, wagered against him definitely did not endear himself to me. And I know that maybe some moves that Messi has done with all the money in the world that he has, that he associates himself with Qatar and you know all the shady dealings there and also very good at tax evasion maybe is not seen in a good light, should, should be questioned as well. So, you know, I can see debates there. But from personal preference, I always liked a player like Messi a little bit more. But I, wouldn't even, I, 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 I would not even say that for a long time of that Barcelona team, I enjoyed an Iniesta and a Xavi way more than a Messi. Messi was just, this is like, this is, you know, the cherry on top. But being able to, uh, you know, this fast running and so on, uh, or this many goal scoring, I always was more one for the midfielder. I was always more Pirlo and Zidane than uh, being the big striker. But if it's purely between those two, I always had a little bit more for Messi. And yes, I was always leaning a little bit more on the Barcelona side as well. Full disclosure, also leaned more to the Argentina side. Then I did to the Portugal side. As is evidenced in my collection where I have only three Portugal shirts and I have way more Argentina shirts. Okay. So that's, for me, the, the biggest point, it was easier for Messi to win a World Cup because he's, uh, he's, he's from Argentina. This is also something, the next debate that will come up is the Mbappé versus Haaland debate, the debate where Haaland has a clear disadvantage because Norway is not going to win a World Cup. Not in any way. Taking it to the next level, greatest of all time. Let's say Messi wins this, is he not the greatest of all time? Well, his trophy cabinet surely seems a little bit full. 
Let's put it that way. He hasn't won the Europa League. I was joking. This is in some comments. He hasn't won the Europa League or the Conference League. So, I mean, his career is not complete in that sense. Yes, it is complete in that sense. He has won every major pro, uh, trophy where he has uh, competed in. Great. Yes, he was also part of one of the greatest club sides of all time. And they are, of course, winning a lot of trophies. Granted. Granted. Um, his career, like Cristiano's, is of an almost unfathomable length. But this is a recent trend in sports as careers are extending. You see it in tennis with Federer and Nadal going on forever. You see it in American football with, uh, you know, Tom Brady is still not retiring. I mean, the stars, we're finally getting to a point in the NFL where now the stars that came up two or three years ago are finally overtaking the stars that have been dominating the game for the last 10 years, like Aaron Rodgers or uh, Tom Brady and the like. So this is a recent trend because athletes know about their value and know uh, that they should take better care of themselves, which was not done before. Before, uh, the gold standard for longevity in careers was actually like a Lothar Mateus who had to reinvent himself. Like a Paolo Maldini or like the Italian defenders, goalkeepers who always, you know, uh, you always played a longer life when you were not hit all the time, but you were kicking. Although Paolo Maldini rarely ever kicked and I'll come back to him as well. Uh, and there were also less competitions to win. It was also, for many of these players, it was not easy to make a move to a big team to win the titles a la Cristiano. You were more or less stuck with where you were. Now, when it comes to the greatest of all times, I'll throw a few names out there that I think Messi definitely has to compete with. Um, compatriot Maradona. We have a Pelé in there who played at a completely different time and age, but was part of three World Cup winning squads, only playing in two finals, though. Um, I really, we need to throw in, I think, the two big stars of the 70s with Franz Beckenbauer and especially Johann Greif. I think there could be an argument, but I think this trophy calculator doesn't live quite up to it. Uh, uh, Michel Platini, potentially, I would actually take him in a sense, uh, as a great footballer, maybe oversee down because he had a little bit more consistency. But that's another base. Maybe it's time to take him out. Um, but I want to add some older names as well. And I want to especially add another Argentinian, Alfredo Di Stefano, who built the great Real Madrid side, which I think is also a very, un, uh, very much forgotten feat. It is really hard to measure these careers up against each other. Alfredo Di Stefano had also a really, really long car career. It's just because of the time state that he was living in, the, the circumstances that he left Argentina. He never could really play for the Argentinian national team. And when he played for Spain, that, was, that did not really work. However, he showed his greatness for Real Madrid winning five in a row. And then reaching another final two years later and still being great and only being beaten by uh, Eusebio. So have that in mind. I think he deserves to be in the discussion. Uh, there are surely great players from the 30s as well, but I don't want to go now there. But you know, there is a Merza who won two World Cups, for instance. Uh, there is potentially Austria's or very own Matthias Schindler, who probably was the best player of his generation as well. So, you know, uh, and we're not even talking about Stanley Matthews, and I'm sure there are a few more Eng Englishmen that should definitely be mentioned there. So, don't forget about this. Now, uh, trophy cabinet, if you com com compare that, it is really hard to weigh up uh, uh, to weigh up um, Pelé's, let's say, two and a half World Cups against Messi's one and a whole lot of uh, titles. Because at the time, you know, there was the Copa Libertadores. Uh, it was not so important. It was more important for clubs to travel to Europe. It was really, really hard. Uh, I think Pelé has a really good argument. He also has a goal scoring record to be still be considered the best of all time. Uh, he also will always be remembered by the older generation. I think that there's a really good ar argument that with the protection that uh, the modern players receive, watch any video of Maradona, how he is kicked up, up and down the field, left and right. He had a broken ankle. I think the only thing that Messi had broken was a hand uh, in 2018 or something like that. So have that in mind. And when I see highlights from Maradona, Maradona did not play. Yes, he played for Barcelona, but when he went to his, his most associated with Napoli, 
Napoli was a torrid side that he by himself made into a world uh, into a world class side that could win twice the Italian Championship against all the odds. That won a UEFA Cup, which was a much bigger competition than the Europa League is now. This was a competition that was more akin to the Champions League than it was um, uh, back then. Yes, in the European Cup, he did not uh, succeed all that much. That's maybe the the flip side of the story. Uh, yes, there were also also also, also failings, but I think heavier ball and his dribbling skills. I still I still think as great as Messi was. The 1986 World Cup is all Maradona because ahead of the tournament, Argentina were not considered among the favorites. Just, uh, just having, I'm just putting this out there. If you would actually ask me, greatest of all time, personally, in terms of impact on football, soccer, I actually would vote for Johan Cruyff. Three titles for Ajax, who were non quantity before. He brought the Netherlands, who were in their first real outing at the World Cup, to the final where they lost under you know, semi tragic circumstances, let's put it that way. Yeah, you, you played against a host nation and you were a little bit too full of themselves, which is the tragedy in there. Um, but you know, he put the Netherlands on the map. Their style of play still reverberates today. Johan Cruyff was a different mind. And I would probably even go so far if he would have played for this 1978 Netherlands squad. That is a squad that made it to the final against Argentina. Okay, there was the Hunter and so on. You, you all don't know. Uh, so I think if I look at the overall legacy to the game itself, Johan Cruyff takes that one, bar none. As a player and as a coach, but even as a player, all that he did as a, as a player, and he was the first one who figured out the marketing. He knew how to brand himself. I think he's an overlooked gem. He's absolutely, totally under, under it because we all look at the South American stars, and probably rightfully so. But I think Johan Cruyff is something else, and I've not even seen him play. But just from seeing what he has done and what he has achieved, uh, and I'm. I'm literally taking out all the coaching, but uh, he already was a coach on the field. He was more than just a player. That, I think, should be considered as well. So, saying it out there, I would give, personally, you may disagree, and that is your prerogative. Personally, I would give Messi is the best of the 2010 generation. By a mo small margin, but just above Cristiano Ronaldo. Just above. And down to personal preference. All time, I think it's difficult and almost impossible to compare because the eras were so different. The times 50, 60, 70 years ago were completely different times. Players did not have the power the, um, and also the opportunities that they have today. They also had much less games to play. So all the absolute numbers and goal scoring records that are done on always should be considered on a, a per game basis. basis. Uh, another one that I want to put out is Ferenc Puskas, of course. I mean, also someone who needs to be considered he didn't win a World Cup. Yeah. So I would say the only thing you can maybe decade by decade you can look at it. And we have all the talk about offensive players. What about defensive players? That's the other thing that uh, the, the bugs me. Who says that a great defensive player cannot be the best player of the world? And now I'm going back for instance to... I'm not saying Paolo Maldini is the best of all time. But he had the longevity. He has for sure the trophy cabinet, albeit not with Italy. And this was more or less on tragic. But he also had skills. He chose to be a left-sided defender... Instead of being a midfielder, he could he, he could have very well, well be one of the best midfielders of his generation. Just saying, who's, who? why do we only focus? I mean, it's a game for all positions. Maybe we should... Uh, this gold debate just bugs me. And I just want to give you my few cents on that. It became a much longer video than I thought, but you know. These are my thoughts on that. I want to hear yours. And yes, we'll talk about the World Cup and all that happened there a little bit later. Uh, maybe tomorrow and the day after, and then we have it. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will surely talk to you soon. Bye!
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!